listener discretion is advised. Adam Corolla and Dr. Quill. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Yep. It is online. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. <laughs> Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and an addiction medicine specialist. You all right there, Drew? Yeah, I'm all right. Feeling good? Yeah, I was, I was just obliging. I knew you'd, you'd tell me to cough something up. I'm going to get it out of the way early. You brought it up? No. All right. It's still in you? Mm. All right, let's see if we can work on that during the show. I'll give, you a, little, your, uh, give you a little vapor rub uh, later on speaking, in the show. Speaking of vapor, yeah. How, how, was, your, how are your emissions tonight? I was a little gassy last night. Uh, Natalie Rotano is our guest tonight from uh, VIP. Saturday nights, syndication, usually on 11.30. What's the average? 12.30. 12.30? Is it, isn't on it? On Saturday nights, and then Sunday kind of varies depending on sports. But does, it, does it vary? Let's see? Oh, That's right. yeah. VIP. Yeah, I've been using the hell out of mine at uh, home. I'll tell you, making a black <laughs> coffee mug is like making a brown toilet. It's genius. <laughs> Very smart. Very smart. You know Ooh, what I'm saying? This is your next act when you become president. All uh, uh, from this day forward, all toilets will be brown. Well, no, I just mean you know, coffee mugs. If you use them, get a little, uh, they get a little grody in there. They get yes, that they little do. Ring going. They get if that you have a thing. black one, you can't see the ring at the bottom. That's right. And I ain't interested in what goes in me. It's just what I see go going in me. I feel that's, like that's my philosophy. Out. And you, what comes out of you me. You don't really want to see that either. I, I don't want to see admire, it, but I do you, take a look. Yeah, I gotta, admire. I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> Now wait a minute. Is is VIP because I I do see it at all different times. But is it on nationally at the same time no, on Saturday? You have That's to check why your I'm local saying listings. that. That's why I said that because we're we're check a your Fox show. affiliate for your local listings on Saturday and Sundays. Right. And you will see VIP somewhere. And if you didn't know, you will know now that we just got bought out by TN TNN. So we are supposedly going to be on now seven days a week. Oh, you mean the syndicated? Yeah, they bought. Oh. So Damn. you are going to get VIP'd. We're in the, you're in the uh, third season, right? We're just finishing up third season, yes. Isn't um, they shows? syndicate earlier and earlier now, yeah. don't they? Uh huh. And how many how many episodes have you guys filmed all together? Well, let me see. Third season at twenty two per episode. Sixty six. Yeah, we're right. we're gonna go right into fourth season. Oh, that's good. So it's just making you a star and a bunch of money and all that good stuff, right? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really worked out. I ran into that beautiful Molly Culver and. Uh, yeah, uh, your home, favorite. Home, yeah, I love her in uh, Home Depot in uh, North Hollywood. Oh, she said she, really, she didn't know. Him. Really keeping it real. She ran away from you? <laughs> no, no. She, uh, I was working there. You know, as a day gig. Uh, she you was, know, there, uh, are, there are jobs for hiatus. <laughs> there, uh, she was, uh, I don't know, she was like in line getting some, I don't know what she was getting. And I ran in her and I was like shocked. I, I couldn't even place her. Really? Because uh, well, you, you don't think of this uh, beautiful auburn haired woman sitting in a North Hollywood Home Depot. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like when people show up in places. Out of you're, context. You're not used to seeing them. Yeah. It, right. I think your brain uses like two ways to to figure out who a person is. One is who the person is, and the other is where you are. Right. And so if you had some premiere party or something, you could easily figure it out. But if you're at some in line at a Home Depot, it's a little confusing. That's all I'm saying. All right. Uh, we talked to I uh, talked to Natalie uh, before the show. She has zero to plug other than VIP, which is uh, which is plenty. Which is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how is uh, how is do you, is it agreeing with you the celebrity? It's you know. Yeah, you don't like it's it. Fun. You like it, it? It's fun. I mean, you know. I don't know. What's the bad part? What's the problem? I I I, I think it's just. I don't really focus on that. I feel like you know it just brings, you know, your goals to another level. And it's just a job that everybody sees you doing and recognizes you. So it's kind of weird. It's fun at first, then it kind of think it turns weird and. Are you being stalked or anything? Or? No, 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 no. Thank God. Not that kind of weird. Would you like no. me to stalk you? Or? No, no. No. Okay. Well, would I like you to stalk me? Oh, <laughs> you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I could follow you home tonight. You know, I'm parked right next to you. <laughs> no big deal. I give you a hundred feet. Keep my headlights off. 
All right. But, no stalking. But, you know, as, as a woman, uh, is it, and I know you have no, nothing to compare this to, but, you know, women are a little more like, like Drew, I'll go to the hardware store, I'll go to the market, I'll go in a pair of sweatpants, a pair of slippers with an erection and a shirt with mustard smeared on it yeah. and could, wouldn't think twice about it. And that's the only way people would identify you. Right. But I think as a woman, especially who's made up, looking hot, looking sexy on TV, do you have to pause before you go out now and think, yeah, I better put a little mascara on in case I run into somebody? Or, or conversely, do you dress do you, down? Do you dress down or do you not want to go out? I mean, do you, have, do you feel like you have to pull it together? Or do no, something different? I just do what I want. I just am myself. If I go out to an event, of course, you know, I want to look nice. Or if you're doing something like a red carpet thing. But you will definitely catch me in my pajamas at 7-Eleven. Oh, really? All right. Well, maybe we'll stop there on the way yeah. home when I'm following It's not you. that exciting. I'm a sweatpants, wear, guys, underwear wearing person. All so. right. So there's nothing bad mm -hmm. about being a celebrity so far? No. Okay, good. All right. Did you the always, money's good. Did you always want to be one? Well, I think that, yeah, I guess it's a dream, you know, and I remember really? always saying, like, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to be a star, I'm going to be a star. You don't ever think it's actually going to happen, and then you're like, oh, my God, it really did happen. You're a dancer, though, right? I was a dancer. A ballet dancer and hip-hop dancer and stuff like that. And you were uh, you were hosting, weren't you hosting a show, a uh, uh, dance show? Mm -hmm. Or a exercise show or something like that on, on ESPN that? Two Hip Hop Body Shop. I was just one of the dancers. It was actually a show by the guy named uh, he's my, named Myla Lavelle, and he still teaches hip hop like all over the world and stuff like that. And I was just happened to get that job mm -hmm. because somebody had gotten fired, right? And I used to take his class because I I was actually a singer in a girls group, mm -hmm. and I was just taking his class because I worked at a gym, and I I was just gonna you know you know like girls groups have to know how to dance. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of brushing up on my dance moves, and then it turned into like me always dancing. Right. So I went to Russia, and did like you know performed at this well, white nights. It was it was a great experience. You did that dance where you cross your arms and kick your feet up <laughs> yeah, real high. Yeah, you know, because that's good. With uh, oh, there you go. A well, little that uh, Russian heritage poking through there. Um, yeah. What so the hell was I going to say? All right, that's good. You right that to stardom. Want to take some uh, calls yeah. here, uh, Drew? Yeah, if you're ready. But yeah, all right. Now, I had something I wanted to say, but I can't remember what it was. Uh -oh. We all shouldn't right. miss anything you might want <laughs> no, to say. anything I think <laughs> you guys should hear. Lisa? Hi. You're 22. Yeah, I got a question for you. My partner and I have anal sex, uh -huh. and I like it a lot, but, like, the next day I find myself bleeding just a little bit. Well. Is that normal? A certain amount of rectal bleeding is good for a woman, isn't it, Drew? It's good. No, no. no. Uh, you know, you can injure yourself with this stuff. It, it's it happens. We we talked to a guy last night that had a fissure, and you can get all kinds of anal pathology. How how often are you engaging in this? Um, maybe once a week or once every two weeks. I remember what I was going to say when uh, Natalie was talking about having a band. I thought if I had an all yeah, you were an all girl band. Mm -hmm. I would call it Maxi Pad. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think it'd be a good name for an all girl band? Maxi pad, you know, really. You, you know what? That, you don't think so? That's the Man Show All Girl Band. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that would be kind of a cool name yeah. for a girl band. It would be band. a good hard rock band. I yeah, think. Maxi yeah. Pad. Girl band. Maximum rock. Yeah, it's that time of the month to rock. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. Oh, off the top of my head. Hey, I don't disagree. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if uh, you don't agree, Lisa. So, Lisa, you, you got to be careful with, with this. Okay. Yeah. Um, what can I do to be more careful? Wait a minute. What what did you say you're good for a week? Two, every two weeks. On the, every, every two every weeks? One to two weeks, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, we have regular intercourse, but like just to mix it up and stuff. Sure. I like doing that and different sorts of things. But like, is there anything I should be doing to be more careful about that? Mm -hmm. Condom, lubrication, that kind of thing. Yeah, and, we and, use all that. And it doesn't hurt. And, I mean, I, I like it, but yeah. it just it yeah. seems like... Some people well, what is that rec this, What is that rectal bleeding? What is that? Probably hemorrhoid or, or tear. Ooh. Really? But, okay, let me ask you this. You, a lot of women bleed when they have intercourse, right? Yeah, that's different. Why? Because that's actually from the uterus. W this is from the, the sphincter. I, I see. It's not from the inside no, there? No, probably not. But this, the sphincter's connected to something, right? Yeah. That that part doesn't bleed. It's from the actual part that it enters through. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, what I mean is... is, is in, in, when women, the bleeding comes 
from way downstream. Way upstream, right? Nano, aren't you glad you did the show again? Yeah, well, I was just thinking, like, yeah. what are you back to the body shop now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I can't answer these questions because I've never had anal you sex. Don't, so. You never did? See, you'd strike me as someone who did. I mean, that's a compliment, but I mean, you seem kind of rough and tumble. Yeah, you just seem like an anal sex gal, that's yeah, all. Well, yeah, well, you know, looks can be deceiving. I guess so, yeah. yeah. I don't, you know. No, not your thing? No, and you not know. Not really my vibe. You know it's not your thing, right? I know it's not my thing. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not Where my thing going? either. We could... <laughs> Well, what I mean is, is there's some people that just she's gonna of... take this back to Molly, right? Oh, yeah. careful! <laughs> I'm gonna tell Molly that you no, please, want please, everything. Don't, don't tell. Okay. Now here's here's what I'm saying. There's certain things you have to try to know you don't like, like liver. Yeah. Like I tried liver. I don't like liver. Yeah. I I was willing to try it though, but I don't like a thumb in the ass. Right. And, and I'm you not, know that without I, trying. I know it. it. Yeah. I know it. I know it. My my heart of hearts and my asses of asses, and I think. Uh, Natalie, you're saying the same same thing about your ass. I, 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 you know you don't like it in I, advance. I, I think there's a Dr. Seuss book here. <laughs> Hearts and hearts oh. and asses and asses. Um, but right. listen, and some people are just not meant to do this. If it's like if it's it's bizarre why people would demand of themselves they continue this behavior. It's in other words, if she were doing some exercise and it caused her to bleed or or a pain in a joint. Uh, should stop that activity because right. that's what your body's right. telling you it's time to do. Blood coming from your rectum is time your body saying stop. No more, no more of, of this. this. That's and, right. And it does actually need to be evaluated. She's only she's twenty two, but theoretically it needs to be looked at. Tony, hey. you're fifteen. What's up? Natalie, I just want to say you're very hot. Thank you. You're welcome. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> and my question is, uh well my situation is uh two days ago. I was in a fight at school, and the guy that I was fighting took a cheap shot at me and kneed me in my testicles. Mm -hmm. And ever since, mm -hmm. ever since then, they've become really swollen and tender and sore. And uh, whenever I ejaculate, there's uh, blood mixed with the semen. And, 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 this, this show is really taking a turn. Just, we have the blood, rectal blood bleeding blood and the uh, semen coming out of the penis. Yikes. Uh, yeah, let me just paint the picture. If this scenario had happened to you, what, yes. would, what would the next move be? Airlift. That's what I figured. To the hospital. Yeah. Not drive, airlift. Yeah, Tony, why have you not been seen by medical personnel? Well, uh, my family's kind of pretty poor, and we don't have a family doctor. Mm. Yeah, but can you just go to a clinic. Go, go to a county hospital. We can. I can just go to a county hospital. No, oh, yeah. Hospital. You can just go there and wait for 14 hours to have yeah, it's not very nice. some just... student nurse look at your testicles. No, you get somebody to look at you. But here's the deal. These, you can actually fracture and rupture and kill the testes quite literally. And, is, that, uh, is that what it could be? Well, it can be lots of things. You, you can you can have all sorts of injuries there, but some of them can be quite serious. Whatever it is, got to get it checked out. All right. You're 15. Yeah. You're going to need your scrotum for, well, say, how old am I? 36? You well, need 10 years. You, you, <laughs> you, lost, you lost the need about seven years ago for your... For yeah. my scrotum? Yeah. My stuff, you my scrotum about, you know, about 93. Okay. Seven years something ago. like that. All right. Get to the hospital. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Carrie. Yeah. Carrie's 17. What's up? Well, um, I think it's just basically that my boyfriend doesn't know how to please me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, we have absolutely fabulous sex, but we've been going... Stop right there. How do those two statements go together? Help me understand that. Well, I'm just a little bit more open, and he is not exactly as more as comfortable as... Well, what is so fabulous about something that's dissatisfying? Well, it's not dissatisfying. It's just the fact that it's getting kind of boring, and I don't know how to confront him about this. I mean, I don't want to insult him because, like uh, I said... We're getting ready to gamble here. Yeah. yeah. You're going to confront What's him about... What's boring about it? Excuse me? What's boring about it? Well, it's just kind of monotonous. I mean, we... we I know what to expect every time we have sex. How old is your boyfriend? Yes. How old is he? He's 17. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the problem because I'm I'm more accustomed to dating older guys. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. the first... Yeah, I'm like, I'm like gambling. How much older? Oh, not much older. Um, just a few years older, like three or four years older. And that's just my typical age range that I date. But this particular guy is my age, and I know that 17-year-old guys are not exactly, you know, as secure with their sexuality as an older guy would be. And he's just, he knows how to please me, but it's just not as... Well, it's fantastic sex. No one would argue with that. Well, no, no, I'm, I mean, the, the sex is, it's... Um, well, it's fantastic. 
Well, it's fantastic, but yeah. it's been fantastic. No, it's fantastic. I, I want to change it. I want to no, add. I gotta, no, you I don't mess it. with perfection. No, I grew once again. Well, hold on a second there. Here, all right? Mm-hmm. All right. Natalie, you got any money or did you spend it all in that car? <laughs> Yeah, I, I got I got a few. You got a, a dollar? dollars. Oh man, you getting a part of this? Uh oh, I don't have any money. <laughs> you you want to borrow some? Yeah, can I borrow a dollar? Okay. Just one dollar. I'll give it to you later when I follow you home. <laughs> I got change in the ashtray in my car. Right. Thank you. What are we gambling? We're gambling on uh, Carrie's past. Now, Drew had an instinct about her. I didn't have too much instinct well, about her. She, she's talking like a, uh, you know. 35 year old yeah uh, sort of through the mill okay professional all right you know, all right don't, she's 17 don't give and, too much away yeah let's just get well, I, I don't have a clear picture of what it is oh yet, but well you something. did you did when you're reaching for your wall no i know something's up I don't okay know all right so anyway natalie here's how this works we haven't done this in a little while we don't gamble on what's going on with her right now i don't know what's going on with her school or parents or anything we gamble on where she comes from what kind of family did she grow up in? Parents divorced? Or is there alcoholism, physical abuse, sexual abuse? Where is it? What is it? All right. I'll go first. I'm going to say uh, she's, she's not crazy about guys. She dates the older guys, says good things and then bad things. Uh, dad, oh, man, I had, a, I had a yeah. lead on this one a few minutes ago, just like my maxi pad banjo. But <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Um, I'm going to go with dad, mm, dad not around. Dad was around, but never paid any attention. Is that too, too, too vague? Too vague. Um, dad. But parents together, I'll give you that one. Yeah, because I should get money for parents just being together. It, these it, days. Yeah, yeah. Parents uh, together. That's such a long shot. Dad. If you be able to predict that, wow. Dad really, uh, really absent. Always absent. But how about, well, but, but like in the, in the same town. All right, but, parents not together. Yeah. Dad gone. Dad yeah. always gone. Stepdad didn't really care. Yeah. Never bonded with the guy. Yeah. Just kind of floated. Right. Mom was kind of into stepdad, into her own ass, maybe booze. Yeah. No bonding with Carrie. Yeah, she just floated. Yeah, I get That's I the get, feeling yeah, I got. I get that too. All right. Natalie? Um, definitely no tension from anybody mm. as far as any male figures in yeah. her house. Yeah. Yeah. If it was at 17 of you're wondering, like, God, this guy doesn't satisfy me, then... Yeah, all right. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm too, I don't think, you know, definitely looking for attention and love. I, no I, love. I, I think we're all three on that same page. All right, but what, that. but what, so. alcoholic dad, sexual abuse, parents could be together. You know, and here's another good gambling bet, Natalie. I'll give you a, give you a hint because I like it. You can say... And you want to stop she can, she can deny. Oh, one, I'm past one. I've already started stocking. There's already a restraining order out on me. <laughs> um, you can say that she won't admit to anything and her parents are together and everything's great. And you'll make your money through default. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She may not cop to certain things. But i got to say whether the parents are together. Or... Par yeah, yeah, parents are together. Parents are divorced. Uh, sexual abuse. Physical abuse. But the one thing about her is she's really, you know, she's pretty open and yeah. honest. Seems like she knows herself really well. But uh, yeah, yeah. So what are you going with? Uh, that's all BS, all that stuff. Yeah, everything you heard from her, it's all... All right, all well, listen, let, let Natalie... Natalie's yeah. got to get a phone. Well, you're the professional. I'm well, not I'm, a I'm, professional. I'm kind of guessing, too. I'm going to guess, too. Because we're, we're kind of guessing what our instincts tell us. Well, I don't know what Natalie's guess is, though. Well, do I have to guess, like, yeah. the definite either alcoholic yes. father? Yes. Or, yeah, something. Something with something. Uh, I think that there is definitely some sort of sexual abuse All right, good or enough. rape or something. Fine. Yeah. Good enough. I think at, at she, she definitely had that 12-year-old, 19-year-old relationship. Yeah. You know, yeah. 12-year-old, she, she definitely had that. Yeah. But and I think she had some sort of like quasi-hippie mom who was a professional. I was going to say. Yeah, mom, mom's got this girl full of all kinds of stuff. Uh -huh. It is all intellectualized BS. Uh -huh. It's all BS. I'm, I'm not in, he doesn't satisfy me. It, it's see. all a lot of load of right. crap, but it's covering up for something. She wants it, to experiment. It, but too. the covering up is what we're all picking up on. Right. about the dad not being there. I, I can't figure out why dad wasn't there. I, I, let's just say... Uh, dad, the professional guy, traveled a lot or died. something? Died. 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 All right. Well, let's hope. That. Drew, you keep your fingers crossed for dad dying. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, keep your fingers crossed for rape. Or left. Or he left. All right. Or he all right. left. Carrie? 
Yeah. All right, baby. Now, uh, what's the situation at home, just so we can settle these bets? All right. Um, parents are divorced. Mother is an alcoholic, not a hippie fanatic, never filled me full of anything because she's dumb as hell, and I, I have a good relationship with her, but it's more like a friend relationship with her. Right. Mm -hmm. Father is around, but no, not a lot of attention there. Um... Let's see. Let's see. No uh, yeah, let him talk. Let him talk. Yes. No alcoholism with father and no sexual or rape abuse. Well, mm -hmm. Any stepdads? No stepdads. So well, mother's boyfriend. It doesn't count because I don't really, you know, see him or. The alcoholic mom. How, how long is how I had alcoholic mom? How long was you be a, a pothead mom? I didn't <laughs> say pothead. You well, said that. What? Um, how long has uh, your mom's boyfriend been around? Well, about seven years or so. Oh, so wow, but they're not married. No. All right, now hold on a second. I think I, I'm going to close this money because I said divorced, I said mom alcoholic, yeah, yeah. and I said stepdad hanging around but never bonded with. Ask about the 12 year old. But there's a boyfriend of seven years. That's pretty good. It's still, we got to figure out still what's wrong with the dad situation. She else. definitely doesn't like All his right. stepfather. Yeah, yeah. yeah or oh, a long, long time boy. When you were, when you, how old were you when you had your first boyfriend? Twelve. How old was he? Right. Um, um, you're right. That on twelve seventeen. Twelve seventeen. I said twelve nineteen. Did you lose yeah. your virginity at twelve? No, thirteen. I lost my virginity. Mm. To uh, how old? Sixteen. Uh, uh, but she had a. Uh, I'm sorry, Drew. That gets you. Not quite. Huh? Not quite. He, we, he, Drew was implying some sexual activity at uh, twelve thirteen with an eighteen nineteen year old. That didn't Close. happen. Close. Close. All right. It was it was a very unhealthy sexual relationship when I was much younger, but I've I'm in counseling and I've worked out those problems and I feel very comfortable with my sexuality and I'm not promiscuous. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. guy um, that I've been with, I've been with him for about three and a half months. I waited about a month before I had sex with him. Yeah, what, what, yeah, what's good. up? Uh, what's up that you have this sort of bitchy alcoholic mom that you don't really bond with that well, but you're in therapy and stuff? Does your is your mom a professional or where's the money coming from? Um. Well, my, my father's. We're real well off. I don't live with my mother. I live with my father. I see my mother on the weekends, and she, she's just, uh, she's there, and I love her. But I don't, sure. I don't not blame there. her for anything. At and, all. And what's, uh, where's Dad? What's his problem? So she's got to be really independent. You can tell. Yeah. What's up with Dad? Um, Dad's around. We just, we don't have a very close relationship. I mean, he's a very loving, caring father, but we. So nice. No, he's no, no better, but. <laughs> You just don't like him that much. When he was married to mom, was there a lot of violence in the home or aggression? No, not yeah. particularly. They were only married until I was two. No. Okay. Is he a business guy? Does he tr work a lot? Yeah, he does work a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we all we all picked up on basically the same yeah. vibe, which is you kind of raised yourself. Yeah. And, and, and Andrew picked up on the sort of therapy part of it, not that you were in therapy, but that there was somebody was feeding you some stuff and you're kind of intellectualizing things. But meanwhile... It's like too much intellectualizing and not a feeling going on. Right. I think there's a lot of feeling going. No, on. I'm hearing more of it now, frankly. Yeah. Now they're sort of we got you going. a little bit. Yeah. So, Kara, listen. Say to the guy, tell him what you want. Well, if that's uh, that's kind of difficult. That's what I wanted the advice on. Um, the guy <laughs> loves me and he wants to please me. He leaves the the pleasing up to me. I mean, in in our in a course, where I'm just like in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you instruct men, they will yeah. perform. You, yeah. you just got to tell them. They will not hurt their feelings. They're delighted to be, they're, they're willing students all yeah. the time. I've, I've taught him some things since we've been together. Yeah, so this I is the part that's all right. Well, they've only been together three and a half give months. A I mean, give them a little bit of time. Yeah, also, this whole thing, I'm the teacher, I'm in charge. That, that, yeah. That's bothering me. That's, yeah, that's and not, I, that's not I, real. The part with, uh, well, you will be the teacher if the kid's 17 years old. This, okay. It, it, you know, a, a, a good teacher's pupil doesn't and know. And even when they're older. Well, I had a Confucius like <laughs> saying, which is a good teacher's pupil doesn't know he's being taught a lesson. That's what makes a good teacher. They just think they're enjoying themselves. Oh, mm. write that down. Yeah. Oh, screw you. No, that was good. Oh, it was? Yeah. I thought you're screwing around. That's true. What makes a good teacher? You think you think you're having a good time, but you don't know you're, you're being, learning. You're being stuff. entertained. Yeah. All right. So don't give them that whole rap about. I've been with a lot of older guys who are more experienced. <laughs> than just slow down and, and mellow out. And and uh, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Your 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 uh, your boobs may say seventeen, but your brain says thirty-seven. <laughs> and you're a bit of a ball buster. And this guy's seventeen; doesn't know what's going on. And I, so I just slow it down. I personally a bit. think that you should just you know take a little bit. Maybe a month wasn't long enough, and mm. you just take a little bit more time to get to know each other on a more you know intimate level, right, other the, the, than sex. And right, then you the, can feel each other because when you don't, you know, you don't know each other yet. So how can you? 
you know, when you know each other on without sex, and then you sleep together, it's so much better. That, that you don't feel that there's any connection there. That there's no connection yeah. yet. That's why. Or when you're really drunk and you don't even know the person's name. Exactly. That's your favorite. Yes, right, I'm, I'm giving Natalie the dollar back that I took from her. Do you want to keep it for the next bet? Well, I, I, well, now he's got money. I'm taking I'm taking the two dollars because uh, we're all close. I think I was a little closer. You were closer, absolutely. All right, hands down. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Rattano is our guest tonight from uh, VIP. Check your uh, local listings Saturday night and uh, Sunday. I see it at noon, I think, uh, out here on Sunday, or I have. It's like on, I saw it at 5 o'clock. It's on all the time. Just, all right, just turn the, the TV box. on and, and <laughs> You'll see us. watch VIP. And uh, <laughs> when we come back, we'll talk to uh, Enrica. Uh, that is uh, 18 in a gang bang and members threaten to kill him. Oh, he's in a gang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say the word gang without the word bang behind it on this show. He's in a gang. He's uh, threatened to be killed. We'll talk to him uh, after this. You know It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Natalie Rotano is here tonight Hello. from VIP. Yep. Saturdays, Sundays, almost every day. But the, uh, it will be every day. New one Saturdays, right? Repeats on Sundays. All right? Repeats on Saturday, new one on Sunday. Oh, new one on Sunday. I just figured because Saturday comes before Sunday, <laughs> but it comes after it because it's the next week or something. Yeah. All right. So anyway, turn on uh, Fox and uh, find it. I'm sure you guys who uh, watch it know where it is. All right. Ready to have a mm -hmm. talk to well, Wait a minute. That isn't who we were talking yes, to. Yes, you said. Yeah, but that wasn't the guy's name. Enrique. I swear yes, to Christ. The, the it, one that's in the gang. Yeah, but you, you must have been pronounced. No, no. Hello. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't spelled that way. Enrique? Yes. All right, hold on a second. They rewrote that in to get you to spell it, to pronounce it properly. Okay, but listen, you're gaslighting me, you guys. It, it, it makes me uh, makes me feel high. Enrique? Yes. Oh. All right, I'm sorry. Yes, um, right now I'm, I'm in a gang, and, like, if I try to get out, they, they tend to kill me. Like, if I were to go to, like, um, the night, to, like, uh, another state, them killing my family or something. Really? Yes. Why? Because it's it's a rule. No. No traveling? No. Well, uh, what if you got like a note? Couldn't do it? No. No. Are there any conditions? Where, what state are you calling from? New no. Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah. No. Well, why not, where, where do you want to go? Do you want to go somewhere? Well, you know, I want to live a better life. Uh, I see. Do you, uh, now, when you say your family, you mean your mom and your dad, or you yeah. mean your your yeah. kids or your wife or whatever? No, my mom and my dad. Yeah. Can't, uh, what gang is it? Oh, no, no, no we don't want to know. We don't? Because then we're, then we're in. What if they're listening? We're in the right. We're, we're in the, the gang? Then, then we're involved. we got to do something. Wait a minute. Drew travels a lot. <laughs> Drew, are you saying you can't travel if you're in the gang? That's right. I won't be able to travel well, anymore. Well, I want to know what the name of the gang is. But, they, they, now, you know, you're putting him in jeopardy that way, really. I can't let you do that. Jesus Christ. Hey, what if they hear him saying that? Oh, what if, what if, what if? Jesus Christ, try and do uh, some radio yeah, here. I know you just march along that with any concern about what the outcome of what we say and do. It might no, be. He, I, I, you have no feel for the radio at all. People listening to the show are curious what the name of the gang is. I don't know if it's the Crips or the Bloods or what the hell it is. It's not going to make a difference if he said what it was. unless he would. He says the Bloods, it's the Bloods. He says it's the Crips, it's the Crips. You know, it's going to be some lo these are local name. Why? Like well, I'm curious. Is a lot of the uh, gangs that uh, we started out here, mm -hmm. when I say we, I mean me and my black Chicano brothers out here, mm -hmm. we, uh, we franchised. We mm -hmm. sent them out around the country. Mm -hmm. I want to know if it's one of those kind of gangs. Enrique? Yes. Is it, uh, is it like a big gang? Yes, yeah, a very big one. All right, so it'll be like the Crips yeah. of the Bloods or yeah. something like that. So they open up chapters. Well, it's a Mexican one. Oh, the uh, um, the Chupacabras? No, no. Uh, right, real, right. No, no. They have. There's a name. There's like a, the uh, something mafia or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. See that? All right. Is is there any way you can get involved with your church or something? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Are there any circumstances where they let you out? Well, you have to die. No, I mean, do they have any kind of... Is anyone you can talk to? Is there any sort of 
you know. Not really. It's like once you're in it, you're in it forever. Well, it's like, listen, I'm in AAA, but I never call them. You know what I mean? Could you do that kind of thing? Mm. And they'll kill no. your family? <clears throat> yes. Well, wait a second. How how high up are you? Are you a high-ranking member? Um, no, not really. I just like, started. You just started? Yes. And who recruited you? Is there one guy? Is there one decent guy uh, in that whole organization who you know, who you can talk to? Well, yeah, kind of. So you can appeal to it. I mean, who people. who got you into it? Can you talk to that guy? What do I call it? A sponsor? Girl? Can you talk to that guy? Probably. Why don't you talk to that guy? Here's what you need to do. You need to talk to that guy, and you need to say, uh, listen, uh, I'm not going straight. I'm just taking a little, a little crime sabbatical. A little time off on the criminal scene, and uh, my my mom's sick. You know she's worried. Make up a good lie or something, yeah. and tell her you, you hurt your ankle or something, and you gotta you gotta drop out, and see what he says, and just tell him how how do we go about this? Okay. And you're not gonna become a cop. You're not gonna talk to anyone. You're not gonna do anything. You don't know how to start fading out. See, I think you gotta fade out. This works with everything, every kind of relationship. Like, you know, those friends you don't like, those people you don't want to hang out with anymore. Mm-hmm. You don't show up one day and announce that you're leaving. It's just all of a sudden they call one day and they go, hey, this weekend we're going over there. And you go, ooh, yeah, this weekend there's a uh, uh, VIPs on. I can't, I can't make that. <laughs> and they go, oh, okay, well, maybe next week. Yeah, 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 next weekend. And you kind of return a call, but you keep waiting a little longer in between returning the calls. When you used to call back a half hour later and you don't wait a day, and before you know it, it's just faded. Yeah. I think he's got to do that. Fade out. Yeah. I, I like, wonder though if they have rules whereby if you even. Hey, we got a big raping going on this weekend. You coming out? Ah, oh, I, I sprained my raping arm. Something like that. <laughs> sprained your penis. I sprained my penis. I got to stay in. But I'll do it next they, week. They may have rules where if you even talks like that, they come. Start working yeah. Around, you know? Yeah, I don't think so. I think we don't overdo it with the gang thing. I think it's a one of those. Uh, I think we're like white people, and we're a little too freaked out. The media does a little, yeah. a little too nutty. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's quite as. I, it, look, put it this way: every gang special you see is is way over the top. I mean, it's, it's super dramatized. I'm not well, saying. This person is. They're afraid that their family is going to be killed. Yeah. yeah. I I believe. Here's what I believe. <clears throat> I believe that a gang, in order to keep people in their gang, would say, anyone who drops out, and we're coming after your family. I believe that. I, uh, but I don't believe that they would for every low-ranking person who got in six months ago and doesn't seem to know anything, drops out. They're not going around killing everyone's family. Now, I understand they say that, but they just couldn't possibly keep up with it. Because there's a fair, fair amount of turnover in these gangs. I don't. It's not. I don't believe it's like what yeah, they think. They're all dying. Guys get in. Well, okay, but they, do they have to kill your family? If you die? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, you don't think you get shot? Yeah. What if you stumbled and killed yourself by mistake or something? You landed on a knife. Or what, yeah. if, what if, you, as you died, you uh, sweared your your uh, uh, desire to get out of the gang? Forget it, Drew. Here's what I think. I think gangs are bad. I think they're full of bad guys. But I think most of, most of the time they sit around smoking weed and uh, screwing chicks. That's what I think. It's kind of like retired people who got a lot of energy. You know what I mean? And I don't I don't think they kill everybody. No, a lot of, lot of gangs don't have a lot of bad people in them. They, they yeah, have most of them. Oh, no, they're good fellas. Yeah, it's Jewish gangs. Larry? Hello. Uh-oh. You're 25. What's up? Well, I'm a big fan of Natalie, and I, so I've got a couple questions for her. But, uh, you, Dr. Drew, you know how you're talking about a Westwood nun? Yeah. You know, I can't believe they canceled uh, David Essel alive. Whatever. What is that? <laughs> you know you know what David Essel, he had a program there on Westwood One. And no, you don't know. never heard the name in my life. Drew, Drew, you did a promo for him. Oh, we did promo for him. Oh, we do promos for everything. We never know what, what it is. What kind of what kind of show was it? It was a it's the, the only positive Rio show where he, you know, talked about people getting you know making their goals and. That. Yes, I did know. I did his show once. Oh, you did? Yes, yes. Well, yeah. see that. Yeah, anyway, so um, Natalie, yeah, I've been a big it's, fan of yours, and um, oh, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they canceled it. It sucked. <laughs> I never heard of it. I'll take Drew's word for it. Mm. Go ahead, Larry. 
Um, yeah, the uh, the martial law three episodes that you did. Yes. Was that something they came to you for, or is that something that you know you uh, auditioned for? I had to audition for it. Yes. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then has Playboy contacted you, or have you thought about doing this? Um, yes, it's been thrown around. I'm the sure. Idea. I'm sure mm -hmm. they contacted everybody on. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to. Make I'm not trying yeah, to say that. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yes, they have. They have. They have contacted. And, and is, is the money? How, what's the money like? And why can't go ahead, No, what, tell, tell me how much. It's good. I know, but what's up with money? I made two hundred fifty grand doing some crappy commercials for a phone company. I don't understand. Is I it the IRS is going to catch up? No, or it's, it's, or it's vulgar to talk about money. I know, but I'm asking. Is I know. It's it's vulgar. Vulgar. It's vulgar of you to ask. It's vulgar? I, I think it's vulgar not to. I don't understand this. It, it, it feels a little dishonest that people don't talk people about it. People listening, you think the people listening would like to know? I don't actually know. Yes. I don't actually know. I'm not but criticizing you. Oh, shut I'm up. not criticizing shut you. Up. Shut up. <laughs> I've said so, I'm so done with you, Drew. <laughs> what are you, what, now, how much? Are you, Drew? What kind of money are we talking about? Now just give me a range, and that way it's not like you, you told me. It's, you know, it's up there in the... More than five. No. Five what? I listen. Is it is it like two hundred fifty grand or no, is it five hundred grand okay. or no. is it, oh, it's one hundred twenty five grand? I mean, I wouldn't get. I, I would never get that much. Like Pamela Anderson probably gets that much. Yeah. I don't know. She never told me. So it's like because uh, we don't talk about money. But anyways, so it's like uh, seventy five grand or something. It's a little. It's like closer to like one hundred fifty. All right, one hundred fifty. They should be one then. Well, really seriously. How long? What's it going to take? An afternoon? No, but seriously, it, it, it's a it's a risky it's a proposition. And it doesn't it, hurt anybody anymore. But it means it's meaningful good publicity. Mm. Oh, shut, shut up! Anyone. Listen, Drew. You know you'd make a great agent. Not. Not the direct the retro. Yeah, Anthony. No, you you make a good. You'd be like the uh, nagging mom agent. I don't know. She could hurt. It's cold. Somebody could get hurt. Those pictures. Mm. You know, people are going to masturbate on to those. <laughs> it's really it's demeaning. Uh, her, she has a uh, grandfather. If he saw those, he'd be very upset. Yeah, it's going to cost more. Get her more. My yeah. parents are like, do it. Are they? I'm, I'm more like. Yeah. yeah. I'm more. Ha I'm the one that that has the second thoughts. What, what do you feel then? What are you second thoughts? I just well, first I just really don't feel like it's really me, mm. you know. Yeah. And it would be like. Just doing something you want to do. Well, just because like. I have a problem. Like I feel embarrassed, like doing that. Yeah, right. When you have to go there and act sexy, you know, I think sexy is just something that you either are or you aren't. And oh yeah. Going up there is, just, I don't know. I, I I haven't been. I had like I, I've said no so far. Too, too embarrassing. Too shameful. Well, maybe they keep. Do they, they, they keep coming back? It's like watch money? next month. Go see me ass up and like. <laughs> <laughs> well, Playboy, like, well, I guess she got over it. <laughs> I said that about that Colt Roundup calendar. I swore I would never do it, but uh, they came to me to turn to right. It wasn't about, it wasn't about the money. <laughs> yeah, it was just a headshot, and it was covered with semen, but it was just the headshot, and that's what we agreed on, although I, I didn't see the stipulation about the bucket of semen that was mm -hmm. dripping down my head. <laughs> no, you know, you know what I was like is they... they they always get away from the money, whoever they talk to. No, it was a beautiful shot. The photographer, Fernando, was a photographer. He was beautiful. He was a talented man. I mean, he was sex. You didn't talk to her about that. Oh, you she think. does it for Everyone does it for money. What, what else? What don't you do for money? But the thing about Playboy is it's, it's tame these days compared well, to what they, else is it, out it, there. You know, it's, and it also, can be great for your career or it, can be. it you know, could not be good for you. Uh, you, you know what? I'll tell you today. Quite honestly, I I think it's I don't think it breaks it. I don't think it makes it anymore. I think it's been done too many times, mm. and and Playboy isn't what it used to be. And I don't think I think there's a little more. Who cares? Just another commercial. So you might as well just cash in and uh, get that money. Also, be cool to look at when you're you know 85 and things aren't holding up as well. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Sure that, uh, sure exactly. that All right, we'll take a little break. Natalie Rutano is our guest tonight. VIP is the name of the show. We'll be back after this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carroll. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Natalie Rutano is our guest. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Natalie, of course, is from uh, VIP. That's good now. You've got to talk from Playboy over to Hustler. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice, Adam. Good well, work. Hustler, on the other hand. Yeah, yeah. that's different. That's a very class uh, act. That's a piece. I did see a, 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 
an issue of Hustler, mm-hmm. and um, they have, you know, girls p- t- getting pictures of themselves, you know, peeing. Yeah, they they do a lot of peeing on each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, we had uh, Larry Flint in here. Uh, we've had him in here quite a few times. You know what I like about Larry Flint? I say, uh, Larry, he, he drives a Rolls Royce. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the same car, really, isn't it? I think so. The point is, is... Uh, I said, hey, you got any porn in your trunk? Oh, yes. Can I go get the porn out of the trunk of your Bentley? Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I go, uh, then I go, uh, hey, uh, hey, can I have a uh, subscription to Bussy? Oh, okay. It yeah. really, it's like Santa Claus come here with yeah. when Brad, when the then he, Larry comes here. Then he comes two months later, I'm like, uh, hey, Larry, uh, it's been two months, have I got any... And got a issue of Bussy. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, like, I apologize. Yeah. Then two days later, I get I get my Bussy and a bunch of back issues. And I get an apology from him. I guess he doesn't want to let the kids down. Um, you know, Bussy knows... is that a new magazine out? Yeah. Oh, it's not new. It's been around for a while. But I I said to Larry, I said Larry, what that one on the he's been supporting it for a while. What yeah. percentage of the people that look at your magazine enjoy seeing folks whiz on each other? I mean. It uh, must be a lot no, because I, there's it, a it lot isn't. of pictures no, it, it in isn't. there. It isn't. It isn't though. I mean, guys are sick. Guys are bent. Guys are twisted. And they're all really young girls. But I work with a bunch of screwed up guys, and I and I see the urination thing, and it's like one out of every ten guys is into it. It is not the majority. And I got him. We got into a discussion about it. And it was basically, he substantiated my theory, which was, you have to keep pushing the envelope. If, well, he, if, he told you a story, though, about how he, they played that one picture in there and got this incredible written response, a, a whole flood of letters. Flood. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, he compelled them to go do more of it, and then they got more of a response. He kept responding to the sort of... But, but it did back to another theory of yours, which is, don't believe what the small minority that writes into you Yes. That, that represents somehow the majority out there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how many letters have you written in your life? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And how many letters have the people that you appreciate, that you respect, that you enjoy, that you hang out with? Are they letter writers? No. Letter writers. I've seen people that write letters. They're the unemployable. They're the mentally challenged. They're the folks who sit home and hear voices. And then that, that's what the networks and, and, the, uh, and the, the publications, they all respond to that. Some crackpot in Minnesota wrote ten letters telling Larry, "Hey, keep coming." And now Larry's de- devoted, he's devoted his life to urination. Now, meanwhile, I'm trying to jack off. I can't do it. I think it's your. Like I'm, I'm, I don't I, listen. I don't like women. That's true, but it's, I don't hate them that much. I think it's them getting urinated on all the time. Uh. Well, it's, it's 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 really it's really bizarre to me, and I find it oh, distracting. So it's, it's guys peeing on women. Is no, it's women no. peeing on women. Oh. Or just just peeing, you know, women by a pole on or themselves. yeah, it's like putting out a small uh, waste paper fire, something like that, a trash can. <laughs> now, see, this all has meaning, and it isn't good. If they had them peeing on stuff that made sense, man, being it like some Alka Seltzer like tablets in a toilet. No. Oh yeah, <laughs> too novel. So uh, anyway, I, I I just think it's about envelope pushing. All right, let's take a call. A second. You want to do that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Stephanie. Yeah. You're 14. Mm-hmm. What's up? Okay. For the past few days, my girlfriend has been going over to um, a guy's house, and we both kind of like him. Well, I used to. And they've been like making out, and yesterday she. He gave her oil, and today, um, last time I saw her, she went home with him, and she hasn't called since. This is your girlfriend? This is yeah. a, well, this is an town that somebody made a you're, time. You're bisexual? Yeah. 14. Did you get molested? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Of course. Almost. Oh, that makes sense. What happened? What? Wait, wait, I'm telling the single story. She t- your, your friend, who is also your girlfriend, is her lover. lover. Her lover, a oh, 14-year-old right, right. lover, is also going after a guy and having oh. oral sex. And Stephanie wants the guy, except this is his, her girlfriend. Chaos. Told you, 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 you don't want the guy but anymore. You want the girl and you haven't heard from her. Both your parents heroin addicts? Or just one? What? What's up? What's up? Hey, you ever get molested? Um, almost. I've only had one of the birth boyfriend, and this is my first girlfriend because, I don't know, I was kind of a prude a while ago. I don't know. 
I was afraid to do shit. What, what's that? Please don't swear. Sorry. What what you what's your dad do for a living? I just haven't seen my dad since I was like three. Yeah. Well, uh, why, why not? Where is he? I don't know. He's like in California. Is he a drug addict? No. You just never talked to him. No. He's like stupid. He doesn't even know our number. That was a drug addict. Yeah. And uh, stepdad? No. That never around. I don't have a stepdad. Just you and mom. Yeah, me, mom, my mom, and my sister suffer. When did you lose your virginity? I'm a virgin. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, bisexual virgin. Yeah. Another good band name for an old girl band. Maxi Pad and Bisexual Virgin. <laughs> I think Bisexual Virgin could open for Maxi Pad. <laughs> we gotta take a break. All right, Stephanie, we gotta take a break. All right. Uh, your life's a mess. I'd like to shake you like an etch a sketch. Start <laughs> over. Okay, try don't have sex with anybody. We're gonna take a break. Yeah. All right. All right, we'll be back. Just hang on. We'll be back with uh, Natalie Bertano from VIP after this. <laughs> Throw your hands up. That's right. Put your hands in the air. You wave them around like you just don't care. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carroll. That is Dr. Drew. Natalie Rotano is our guest tonight. She's from uh, VIP. Saturday nights, Sunday nights, and uh, just about uh, every every uh, every week day that ends uh, with night is uh, when it's on. So uh, you can find her uh, shooting guns, uh, stomping a little ass. You do uh, do most of your own stunts on that show, Natalie? No, I don't. Good. <laughs> Thank God. I'm so tired of celebrities going, I did most of my stunts. Mm-hmm. I mean, the ones where you're running? Yeah, I did. That's me <laughs> running. <laughs> and uh, then, you, do, then like, I hold the gun up. The they they yeah. do like the all the dangerous stuff because we can't you sure. know, risk any hurt. Plus, I don't feel like doing it. Hey, yeah, <laughs> why would you? And, and I don't know if the uh, insurance company even covers that. Oh, we lost this. All right, we had our uh, bisexual gal uh, drop off and uh, oh. beg her to uh, hang on. What about firing the guns? That's kind of cool. No, I do all that by myself. And those are. Uh, and it's, that's the part that I don't really like the most. It's 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 scary. I'm like I'm always. If you watch me, I'm like this. Are those are those are real guns with blanks or what are those? Yes, they're blanks. No, I know they're blanks. But I mean, are they? <laughs> do do they? Are they blank guns that are modeled after no, they're real, real guns? guns? So they're real guns with they're blanks. Real. Exactly. In them. Exactly. Oh yeah. There's probably eight or ten guys assigned to the gun, all getting a ton of money just sitting around. <laughs> but you gotta have it. Or you, you end up. No, there's a, a weapon specialist all the time, and you, every yeah. time you, there's a weapon on set, you know they'll be like, "It's a cold weapon," and everybody, you know, the AD gets shown the cold weapon. Everybody that you're pointing the gun at gets. Shown. I mean, it's it's a real thing. As soon as you get done shooting, you have to put the guns down, and they come and take the guns away from you immediately. Yeah. No sword fighting with the M16s or anything like no. that. I'm gladly giving them away. Yeah. It's funny though to do it. You know. Yeah. My character, I guess. Yeah, it feels cool. I've never fired a gun. You ever fired a gun, Drew? No. No. Uh. Yeah, I think I did like a camp or something. Are like you guys doing like a uh, target shooting, hard shooting or something? Yeah. Oh, real, yeah, real I guns? skeet shooting, too. I think about it. You went skeet shooting? Mm. Son of a bitch. That sounds good. Yeah, it's not. It's not? It's Wait, just miss every time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd get into skeet shooting if they put something good on there, like um, some kind of, um, I don't know, cream-filled paste or something. <laughs> I, the whole clay pigeon thing. That doesn't look like a pigeon. No. I like to look like something. No. Yeah. You ever go skeet shooting now? Uh, no. No. I'll have to do it myself. Barbie? Yeah. You're 23? Yeah. What's up? I have this problem. Yeah. My boyfriend, he works nights, and he wants me to call him up on the phone and talk dirty to him. Right. And I don't know how. What's going on in the background there, Einstein? Me? Yes. Um, the radio's on. All right. Could you go ahead and turn that off? Sure. Thank you. (laughs) Idiot. Drives me insane. Yeah, the talking dirty is tough because you have to kind of mean it or you have to be getting paid for it. Huh? Yeah. So you sound like you mean it. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's it's hard to get out of people when they don't really want to do it or they're not comfortable with it. Well, she could call, like, sex lines and learn. It's a good plan. 
Why don't you call one of the sex lines and um, see what you can glean off of them? Well, I have a one nine hundred block, and I couldn't call sex lines. Oh, you got a block? Yeah. Where are you living? I live in Boise, Idaho. I see. You live at uh, Boise, Idaho, though. Idaho, yeah. Idaho. 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 Do you live with your family? No, I live by myself. Uh huh. Mm. And you got a you got a nine hundred block? Yes. Yeah. You got a drinking problem or? No, I just. I run my bills up a lot, so. I see. You don't trust yourself. No. Yeah, I have a. I, I live at home too, but I have the parental lock on uh, my my satellite. <laughs> I, I jack off too much. <laughs> I end up jacking off the scrambled uh, porn now. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You don't trust yourself. That's smart. And you uh, you have those like uh, childproof latches on the door so you don't <laughs> eat any cleanser and that kind of stuff. No. 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 Uh, but Barbara, hold on. You know, see, just like all like, see, this is uh, the part of this show that keeps me coming back for more. It's not the not the molestation, the rape, and the uh, incest, and all the good pregnancies and STDs. It's the people who call in who have a 900 block on their phone who live alone. <laughs> That's the part of life I'm interested in. Intriguing and high comedy. Too. Yeah, the guy with the herpes is a dime a dozen, but the chick who has the 900 block on her own phone when she's living alone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the girl that's I want to. I want to know more about her. Yeah. So I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, Barbie. Yeah. Who installed the 900 block on on your phone? I did. You did it yourself. Yeah, I have a lot of parties and stuff, and people use my phone all the time, and I don't want nobody dialing the 900 numbers and running my bill up really high. Have, do you dial 900 numbers? No. Never. <laughs> Never. No. Never. Yeah. Originally, she kind of couched it that she had a little, yeah. little self control problem. Yeah. You don't. You did before. Come on, I hear it in your voice. <laughs> See? What, who, who are you calling? What 900 numbers? Um, I couldn't tell you right at this point. I was quite a bit younger than I am now. What kinds of things were you calling? Um, the lesbian lines and stuff like that. Ooh. Welcome to the hotline that connects large women with men who are dwarfs. You see, you see, it's like uh, these, mm -hmm. these these colors don't fold. They're like a map. They seem like they, they can fit them in your in your glove box. What was the highest bill, Barbie? What was the highest bill? My highest bill? Yeah, hundred and eighty. Mm -hmm. Now, what what would you do? Would you uh, have a few uh, glasses of wine or a couple of wine coolers or something, and then call? Maybe a few Saint nights, and then I'd call. What is that cough medicine? No, it's a, it's it's like a beer, but it's kind of like yeah. a wine cooler. Also, it's got to be an Idaho beer. Or something. Uh, I don't know. No, okay. I don't really knows what's saying. I do. <laughs> I do. Do you? What is this? Like a white so crack cocktail? It's, it's pretty um, catch them. I, I mean, I haven't had any. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> you got a forty ounce in your purse. <laughs> what is it? Is it like up in my Is it like a Zima or something like that? No, it's just a. Go ahead. It's kind of like a. Fruity flavored beer in a way. It's like malt duck. Have you ever heard of malt duck? That's no. like a Zima, right? It's like a no. sweet tasting malt beer. Say no, it's Well, I've never had Zima, but I know what you're talking about. All right. All right. Anyway, All right. back to what So you, you get a little drunk and you call the lesbian line. Yeah. And you masturbate. Yeah. And uh, do you think you may be bisexual? I kind of like both ways. I see. So that would be bisexual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One of our, our good love line answers. I kind of like it both ways. Not bisexual, just both ways. <laughs> and uh, were you a little scared that you might stray over toward the feminine side? No. No. You're Have dead. you? No. You've never been with a woman? No. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. yet. But how dedicated are you to this guy? How serious are you about this relationship you're in? Very serious. Very serious. Yeah. Do you guys live together? No, not yet. And I'm not sure I got the original question. H how do you talk? How do you do phone sex with a guy? Was that the question? Yeah. yeah. And yet she has all these this track record. Of yeah, you, you, you've logged thousands of hours having phone sex. I mean, Natalie's original advice was maybe call one of the services and see what they do. Yeah. And she's Lord knows. been studiously involved with this organization for a long time. Right. You you uh, you recipient of the uh, of the platinum phone, which is uh, something they award to people who log more than 300 hours a year. Talking to lesbian lines. Hey, Barbie. Yes. Why don't you just call back, have a couple of those St. Ides, and uh, call your boyfriend up at work and fall back on that experience you had when you were talking to the ladies on the sex line. Well, I kind of get scared when I talk to them. 
Are you afraid that he's that he's going to hear that you're sort of too experienced? No, I'm afraid I'm not as experienced. All right, well, let's, let's do a little role playing, all right? <laughs> all right, now, you be you. Can you handle that? Okay. And I'll be one of them lesbian bitches. No, I'll be your boyfriend. <laughs> they may do not, do not say bitches. I'll be, I promise now I wouldn't say bitches before the show. I'll be, I'll, <laughs> I'll be, uh, I'll be your boyfriend, all right? Okay. Let's we'll see if we can pull this off. Where's he work, by the way? He works at my car. And, like, by the way, why does he have time to have phone sex? He works at my... I see. Oh. But where? Huh? The security guard? No. He, well, he does the janitor stuff. I see. Right. So he'll be mopping his own stuff up. <laughs> That's what you call job security. I make the mess and I clean it up. All right. Uh, he works at well, Micron. Mop, right? All right. I don't know what Micron is, but that's where he's working. All right. I'll be him. You ready? Okay. Uh, let's see. I'll call you, right? Okay. Uh, bring. <laughs> bring. Hello. Hello. Barbie. Yeah. This is your boyfriend. Hi. Yeah. What are you wearing? Nothing. Oh, really? Yeah. It's nice. Uh you miss me? Yeah, I do. Yeah? You wish we were together right now? Yeah. Yeah? Why? Because I really miss you. Yeah. A lot. What would you do if we were together? Well, I'd probably take you and throw you on the floor and rip your clothes off. Uh-huh. Pull my janitor's jumpsuit down and uh, unleash the janitor and a drum I keep in my underpants. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hard, baby. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm... Yeah? yeah. I don't know. No? <laughs> I you, can't do it. Give me a little reach around, baby. Huh? <laughs> oh, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> My supervisor, Kurt, just walked in. I got to go, baby. Okay. No, you just you try to. Let's, She's so embarrassed. Yeah, you know, you, you I know, suggest you don't a, call. If that's no, what's gonna happen. You need a couple of those. You need a couple of those. Those. Uh, the sweet malt liquors. Okay. Just have one of those. Get a little buzz going. Get in that place. Well, how the, old? Are, how old are you? She's twenty three. Get in a tub. Yeah. Get in a tub I, and light. Normally, I makes the recommendation of a fourteen year old. Yeah, have a couple. <laughs> have a couple highballs. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I do. But listen, get in the tub. Barbie, listen to me. Go to that place called the Tub that all women love so much. Light a couple of candles. Okay. Put, put on a little uh, soft music, a little Al Green, perhaps. <laughs> Have a couple of the St. Ives. Get in the mood, and then make the call. Okay. All right, because you got to take yourself out of your your atmosphere She's a little totally here. She's nervous about it. Yeah. She's freaked out. But you can't be sitting in front of the TV with the sound down and the lights up. you got to be in your place. The, trailer, the trailer's all around her. Women need to be in their place for that kind of thing. And then they can get into it. Trailers have tubs. Oh, how dare you! <laughs> she put, a, put a call block on to block herself from calling. <laughs> hey, you got to know yourself. I respect that. We got, got an hour of the cheese. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that was good. Chet. Chet. He's trying to make a prank. Chet. Chet. Make a prank oh yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chet. Well, nice prank call. Chet. Yeah. Here's the uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, cardinal rules of uh, doing a prank phone call. You cannot let the people you're doing the prank phone call hear you over say to one of your retarded buddies, I'm making a prank phone call. It ruins the whole element of surprise. It, it'd be like... It's not a prank I have a serious problem with. Well, oh, yeah. Hold on. Oh, yeah. It'd be like if the Japanese called us a day before, like on December 6th, and said, Hey, we're going to bomb Pearl Harbor. Is that all right? We'll be coming by early in the morning. Big, uh, Big naval assault. Yeah, it ruins it. Yeah, doesn't have the same. No, yeah. it doesn't work it, because because we don't buy into it. Yeah. All right, so on. Hey, Chad. Oh, yeah. All right, seriously, do you have a real problem? No, no actually, I really do. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, good. You kiss my ass, <laughs> <laughs> Chris. You are an asshole. You're 24. Yeah. What's up? Um, I am engaged to be married in June, and I recently moved in with my fiance and. When we just decided to go to one computer instead of two, and on his uh -oh. computer I found a bunch of porn that had, um, like, a lot of little girl stuff. Yeah. Like, molester type stuff. And, you know, I confronted him about it. He immediately deleted it all. 
What, what was his explanation? I made us go to counseling. What was his explanation for why it was there? His explanation was that he found it a thrill to try and find it. None of it was stuff you would pay for. It was all stuff you could find for free on the Internet. Uh, so his explanation was... Cheap he, pedophile. Uh, he felt Worse. like he was a little thrill of like finding illegal stuff. I mean, there wasn't just that stuff. There was some normal stuff, yeah. too. Like, Which, why? Don't, don't tell, why does this guy just uh, bust people that skipped bail or something? Why is he looking at nude uh, four-year-olds? You know, I don't know, but it just... It, it, it made me very upset. Gave you the creeps. How, how yeah, the counts? Creep Hold on, that's the world's longest car ride, by the way. The one where you and your fiance are doing some emergency counseling because she found kitty porn on on your computer. That's like the world's longest car ride. You know, you know. Let, let's run it through this poor son of a bitch's head as they're driving on the way to the therapist's office. Yeah. How, how's the therapist feel about this? What? Well, she's like? you know, th this is the whole problem is that we so we go into the therapist and you know he is. Not not comfortable bringing it up with the therapist we you know talk about other things relationship stuff but he's just he's afraid that if he says anything to the therapist because of course the therapist gave the whole speech about if you're gonna hurt a child or I think you're gonna hurt a child then I'm required to report it and so really? he's assuming wow. that if he says anything about it it's gonna instantly mean that like he's gonna be labeled as a child molester and so he doesn't want to say anything about it interesting y you know what hey, Drew, I I've been to like a bunch of therapists I never get that speech <laughs> um, do they give that speech normally? Yeah, I mean, she like even gave us a piece of paper that had it on there. Basically, if you tell them that you're gonna kill somebody or yeah, they, they, they you well, it's, it's uh, that's a good thing to talk about terror sauce and that kind of thing. But yeah. but I'll tell you what, uh, the fact that he's worried about it. Your, your boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, concerns me more than anything else. No, I, I think he's embarrassed and he's yeah. using this as a convenient excuse to sort of sidestep the whole issue. You gotta bring it up. Therapist you gotta bring it up because. Yeah. I mean, he's mortified by it. You got. No, no, no. Listen, Chris. He, you got to bring this up. up, Drew. Your therapist is not going to do anything if you bring this up. He he is not. Hey, by the way, if he has nothing to hide and Child Protective Services come, does a report, there's nothing going oh, no, on. No, 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 no. It's a no. formality. Hold on. Do you have kids? No. No. Okay, so you don't have kids. He has no kids from some kind of previous something. Yeah, there's no kids at all. He's not paying for the stuff. He's not producing the stuff. Yeah. No. This this is not going to be reported by the therapist. Why would you? There's no there's no well, victim that's, here that's, because that's my logical. There's no children in the house. It would never be. Hold yeah. on, a, hold on, a second. let me. Yell. I understand what you're saying. You shut up. He's there's no way the therapist is going to report this with no children, it, it, either one of these people. And you're all you're doing is scaring her and making her more reluctant and making his point to her. That's what you're doing right now. Do you honestly think that therapist is going to report this? No, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. What do you I think, think, what do you think I think your boyfriend's are? a child molester. Okay, that, for sure. That may be. Oh, you think he's actively doing uh, something? Uh, no, I think he has done things. You do? Yes. Interesting. Ooh. Interesting. Chris. Yeah. Here's the here's the uh, ironic part. Drew is now going to report your boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> for you bringing it up on the radio. Didn't you sign that thing before you called in? Um. Yeah. You know. Uh, do you think your boyfriend has, uh, like Drew, has uh, believe Drew believes that he's done something in the past? I honestly don't believe that he's ever done anything. I yeah. don't think he's ever acted on any of it. Uh huh. I mean, I really don't think he has. My concern is that, I mean, obviously this is a man I'm going to marry, and I'm concerned about years down the line. I understand that thing that says, you know, he's done this now, and this is basically right. All right, let me hold on a second. Let me get into this with Drew. Your roach theory. I mean, let me, I, let, no, no, hold I on a second, Nana. I yes. think it's a big deal that he, you know, agreed to go to therapy about yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. That's good. I mean, well, we don't know what, what kind of circumstance she dragged him in. Uh, and he's um, going, and I'm not, I'm not talking about no, it. No, no, I'm sure, I'm sure she laid down the law. Yeah. But most of our callers' boyfriends or fiancés would have never showed up yeah, that day. He showed up. Number two. She has a kind of a vibe about him, and she doesn't have that vibe. She no, has the vibe. No, she has the. She she doesn't have the vibe that he's I mean, ever done what, anything. What, what if he was just like looking, out of pure? I don't think this guy's done anything. I think he's a. I don't think he's a great guy. I don't. I think he's done anything. And Drew, there's a lot of this kind of stuff going on. I mean, tell me what is the big difference? I don't want to defend this, but yeah. what is the big difference between somebody who's very much into violent movies, violent depictions, gory, shoot 'em up? Movies even even may rent those videos that have those real tragic deaths and things you know real footage and all that kind of stuff, 
but yet has never done anything physical to anybody. I, I don't know for a fact that there is a difference, frankly. But There's a but, lot of things that people can sort of obsess about, think about, but and not to, participate But when it comes to men looking at things that attract them sexually, right? How, how far is the difference between that and then trying to do something to somebody? Well, a anything. Name any any anything men are saying. You, you know, I love Mink. Mink is coming. She's I know, but I've never had thing. sex with her. But just think yes. of yourself. Would you? Would you be like, hmm? You're at home on the computer, like, mm, let me see what like this uh, eight-year-old no looks no, like. No, no, no way. No, no not even a thought. Listen, I don't even trust people get recipes off the computer. <laughs> I don't even turn the computer on. But I here, can only answer emails, so I'm with you. I don't. That. I don't even do that. I don't do anything. I've never turned my computer on. I, but oh, you have but a fourteen thousand dollar computer. It's uh, thirty five hundred dollars, <laughs> but it's never been turned on. So it's worth. Uh, it's now worth a hundred dollars. Been about two years ago. But here's the, here's the deal. I'm such a genius. Every year I go out and spend three thousand dollars on a computer. No, every other year I spend three thousand dollars on a computer. It sits on my desk and gathers dust, and then I give it to uh, one of the guys who works in my house. I spend a thousand dollars on a new computer that I never touch. But here's the point. I don't know if this guy is. I don't think he is. She has every reason in the world to be concerned. I wouldn't be freaked out with the therapist i would tell the him chris yeah that you tell him that this is the reason you're going to therapy this is the main reason he's there and if he's not willing to discuss it it's like you're not going to therapy exactly and that's like you're not getting married exactly okay exactly. and, and period. put him i mean i want to discuss in therapy and i'll eventually push it to that point but yes i'm just concerned does this mean if somebody's looking at this type of stuff does it ultimately mean that you know, 10, 15 year, years down the no, line. No, Chris, let your therapist be the judge. You work that. it we're, out. You were, That's we're, why you're going. Yeah, we're talking to you for three minutes on the telephone. You're with the professional. Let them do the assessing and then go from there. But let them do the assessments. You've got to begin to process this. Yeah, stuff. don't marry this guy unless you, this has been brought up and worked out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, because it, you don't 10 years or a year want to find out that you know he's hanging out it, it near, doesn't near the mean, elementary it school. doesn't mean he's da you're damned to that it probably no. means when he was you know nine and he was at summer camp somebody uh, gave him a little handy or something and it well i mean he, he was molested when he was like two oh, all right well thank you very much wait 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 whoa 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 who molested him huh male yeah male um, how old was the male uh an adult i don't really know all right how old. Uh, you got a problem kill him in his sleep with a pillow Chris, and he's fine Chris, man. Chris, he needs a lot of treatment, a lot of treatment, and I promise you, he has done this. Get into I that therapy. I guarantee you, he's oh, done okay. okay, good, good. She'll sleep like a baby. Tonight. He's not going to get that's going to happen. For Chris, him he's done yeah. this stuff. Chris, uh -huh. here's the deal: you don't have to get married. You're young. You go to the therapy. If it works out, then you get married. And if it doesn't, then you don't want to get married. Exactly. Well, yeah. All right, go to therapy. Work it out. <laughs> okay. All right, Thanks. baby. Oh, geez, that's such a nightmare for chicks. Listen, all you screwballs with your computers. Do you realize that is like leaving a part of your brain and part of your scrotum on your desk? You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, we've had more Maybe people... Maybe she saved his life by finding it. I know, but we've had more people busted by uh, stupid computer stuff. It's really, it's really incredible. And the computer, you know what it is? I've just discovered this. I, I yell at women all the time for keeping diaries. Because women are fanatical about keeping diaries, and then they Never. leave them under their bed, and then their stepdad comes in and finds out they had a, 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 a threesome on uh, on his uh, army cot, and he's uh, he's pissed <laughs> off as hell, and there's all kinds of trouble. Or some a new boyfriend finds it and reads about all the old boyfriends, whatever. It's a disaster. I tell him, don't keep it, and if you do, please hide it somewhere. Do not leave it where it can be found. The computer is the male diary. And it's even worse than a diary. It's not a written diary. It's a yes. It's 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 like um, it's like when you go into caves and you try to look at the hieroglyphics there and you see what the people were into, <laughs> what kind of animals they were eating, and what their rituals were. That's what that is. It's a modern day cave wall that the woman goes into as the archaeologist and figures out what this guy was into, what he wants, and it's scary and it is graphic and it is right there. Don't do it, guys. You do what I do. You fly those model airplanes. You masturbate. There's no trail. Little semen, little little uh, little kerosene. That's all. Oh, all right. Kerosene. Oh, they run off. Uh, they can run off kerosene. Ah. Yeah. All right. Natalie Rotano is here tonight from uh, VIP. We'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be back after this. Yeah, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Natalie Rotano is our guest tonight from VIP. 
Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday nights, and then, uh, of course, it's on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday nights, or, or it will be uh, very soon. You know, you getting some money out of that syndication? I hope so. Yeah, it's good. Um, I'm sure we'll be getting screwed somewhere in there, but <laughs> yeah, we'll be getting money, though. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It, it, it's weird. You know, entertainment's a great business because you could you can make fifty grand a week and still get screwed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, it's so hard for me because I, I'm like, you know, I made more money than I thought I ever would. So it's hard for me to be like, we're renegotiating. I'm like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah how dare I'm you? happy. That's right. You're trying to live off 35 grand a week. How dare you? <laughs> I got overhead. Well, you understand. I mean, 35 grand a week. It's it, not all that good. It sounds like a lot. But uh, by the time uh, taxes and uh, agents and lawyers... I'm down to poultry uh, uh, 19 grand a week. How am I supposed to live off of that? Yeah, you did find on uh, two uh, hundred a week, 280 bucks a week aerobics. for a million years. Yeah, when I used to teach boxing, I got 20 bucks a class, and I taught uh, like six classes a week. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, what 120 bucks, and then a couple private students are like you know 20, 30 bucks a pop. I don't know, like, like two or three. It was like, it was like 175 bucks a week. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I blew uh, Arab guys for uh, that was a hundred <laughs> of pops. That was pretty only a hundred. Oh, you went up to like five hundred. Well, now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that they know who I am, hiatus. You know, that's right. First uh, Home Depot, and now blowing Arab guys. Yeah, you got to make a living, Tim. Yeah, twenty five. But but let me say one. Let me just say one more thing about all this money we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It is true. Celebrities are grossly overpaid, but and it's it is weird when you say 50 grand a week, I need 100 grand a week. It seems bizarre to be upset that you're only getting paid 50 grand a week. But here's the deal, and this is what I told uh, the great general manager, uh, Trip Reeb, over here at the uh, K Rock radio station many years ago when uh, he tried to lowball me for this job. I think he wanted to offer me, uh, it was like 30 grand a year or something, something ridiculously low, you know. He said I'd be the highest paid part time. Employee of the station, or some kind of nonsense, and I said, uh, "Trip, here's the deal. I didn't get into this business to get rich. I don't, uh, never did. Don't care about money, but I didn't get into it to get someone else rich, and that's what it is. And fifty grand may sound like a you ton. You guys don't. I mean, what the what the CNN bought the shows oh for? Oh my God, off of the wreck. That is my point. That's my point." Fifty grand a week sounds like a ton, and why would you need more? I'll tell you why you need more. Because some son of a bitch who has nothing to do with the show is making two hundred and fifty grand a week mm -hmm. for doing nothing. That's why you want more than fifty grand a week. Thank you. Yes. All right. Jake. Jason. Jason. Jason? Right. Yes. How you, you guys doing? Good. You're twenty seven. What's up? Uh, I'm just wondering. My question is for Natalie. Uh, I'm a SAG actor and a model, and. Uh, Recently here, my agent hasn't really been getting me much work, and so when I do get auditions, I kind of choke. Every time I go up on stage, it's like, boom, I forget what I'm saying. My mind, everything is just gone. What was your most recent audition? Um, it was for a little thing here, and uh, it was in L.A., and uh, it was maybe about six or seven lines they had me read with some girl. I see. It was for a little thing here? Yeah, and as soon as I got huh. up there... That's it, Cam? It was, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> Jason, I get really nervous in auditions, too. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, you have to take a few minutes or, you know, prepare like a half hour before. Just don't listen to the radio. Don't talk on the phone. Uh -huh. Just, you know, completely focus on that particular situation and just, you know, who cares? Right. Just go in there and just do it. That's right. Get drunk. <laughs> hey, Drink St. Ives. That's so St. Ives. So, uh, <laughs> what was your most recent audition for? Uh, it was for like a Twilight Zone type of uh, deal, like a little 15 minute uh, session for like a, kind of like a Twilight Zone. Like an like uh, Andy Dick film? Uh, Another Andy Dick little short? You know what I love about this show? You know I'm never disappointed by how ungratifying every question I ever ask anyone ever is. Yeah. I always think I'm going to do some good radio. I'm going to ask him what his most recent audition was. He's going to give me something funny like some dog food commercial or something, something specific. Yeah. We're going to have a little talk about that. No, never is. And it's for a little something here. It gets more vague, more vague. And then it's some well, it, 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 I, it, it, I just, I just want to say that I get freaked out. I'm so nervous. But we go on audition? Yes. Why? I just am. Here's I, no, finish. why you go? Why do I go to audition? You got money, you got a show, you got syndication. I, well, there's 
you know, I always have to audition. You suggest you, you do what Adam does. Just go, hey, if they want me, they can hire me. That's it. <laughs> I won't talk to them. I won't go meet with them. Yeah, don't do it. They know who I am. Hey, listen, I got I got a callback that I didn't go back on. No kidding. That was your last one. Well, it was for one word. That was your last one. Yeah, it was great. I told yeah. the casting director, uh, and listen, and Drew, please chime in and tell people I'm not exaggerating. It's not some sort of macho BS what? radio talk. When I tell these stories. No, no, you you tell accurate stories. You're in the room when half this stuff you do goes. Not, you do not exaggerate. No, I don't. You're accurate. I told the casting director, this was for a movie, I said, if you want to see me say my line again, my one line that I drove halfway across goddamn town for, here's what you need to do. Close your eyes. Are they closed? Okay, think back to, the, to yesterday when I was here and picture me saying the line again. Because there's no goddamn way I'm driving halfway across town to say one line. That was it. That was his last audition. Yeah. Three years ago. Well, so, two and two and a half. Yeah. Uh, but here's an opportunity to give Jason some advice, right, about acting, because isn't acting about being very, very, very specific mm -hmm. and thorough? And Adam asked him a specific question, and he gets a lot of vague little nonsense. little thing here. What is this uh, Twilight Zone thing? Uh, it was it was a movie called Four O'clock. It's like a, a little. 15 minute segment basically of is it like a student film or something no it, it's actually it's, it's a sag project um for like a uh, like a twilight zone i can't really explain it too much all right well there's just an audition well yeah. maybe you didn't know what it was i also, hey. I also want to pass on my uh, website to you guys too if possible no are you high <laughs> are you high what do we want your website for anderson will drop you off for you get it out there anyway are you already dropping all right listen let me say something to, to a lot of the actors, comedians, uh -oh. and, and uh, performers uh -oh. out there. This is going to be cruel, whatever it is. Okay, well, let me tell you something. A lot of you, the reason a lot of you aren't working, because you suck. <laughs> so you're no good. You want to act, except for the thing is, is we don't want you to act. And there's more of us. It's yeah, not that. It's it is really... true. There's so many people who want to be actors that just suck. There's but so how, many comedians how do they know? that aren't funny. How do they know? There's so many people that have nothing to say. There's so many comedians that don't have a goddamn thing to say. There's so many actors that don't have anything to but, say. But they look at what's out there and they go, hey, I'm better than that. No, they There's don't. A lot of crap they out see there. people on TV and they want that too. That's all. They're not really interested in acting. You ask how, ask how many of them are doing community theater. Ask how many of them are just honing their craft in some way 90 percent of them are going on auditions and working on headshots and shaving themselves that's what they're doing but are do they love acting no because if they loved acting they'd be acting at any level they'd be doing it for free they'd be doing it because they love it they'd be doing it because they want to hone their craft they're going out on auditions because they want to be an actor they don't want to act Ooh. Hey, write that down. That was good. That was good. That was good. Yes, if you love acting, it'll work itself out because you'll be doing what you love to do. Community theater. Mm -hmm. you'll, I mean, it's, you'll the, be in I don't groups. necessarily agree. What? Because tell me what's wrong with that. Because I know people who are so great and they love it and they're not working. But they. But they do hone their craft. They they're do. Right. Yeah. They do their classes. They do their community theater. Yeah. I mean, if you go to any of these improvisational groups or theaters there's a million of them in every city around the country not only does it not pay it costs money to be in those groups there's dues i mean these guys who are living this close to the bone these these instructors at uh, aerobics classes these people that are making the kind of money we were talking about 300 bucks a week are paying 50 bucks a month to be in this comedy troupe just to cover the just to cover the theater basically mm. and i mean that that money a lot half these people don't have car insurance i mean there when i was at the uh, acme comedy theater every mofo in that group nobody made over 310 bucks a week they all paid 50 bucks a month and half of them had they were like guys in their early 30s who had roommates and no car insurance no satellite no nothing i mean that 50 bucks a month could have gone toward something that they needed but they chose to put it toward that they were dedicated they were interested in it and they they believed in it and they were happy doing it it's because that's what they wanted to do wasn't about headshots and resumes and, and waiting in line and going auditions and trying to get discovered. Just about honing your craft and doing it because you loved it. And then something good will come from that. But if you're just waiting around, and going on auditions and getting the headshots, I, 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 I say just quit. Tim? Sleeping. Tim, you're 25. I should go on the uh, sp uh, speaking tour. <laughs> Listen, not all your great thinkers, not all your great minds. Most of you will never realize your dreams. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Can I have my money? <laughs> all right.
That's basically what you do when you're speaking. By the well, way. it is, but I, there's so many. There's so many. Uh, how do people know? Horrible how they, actors. How, out how there. should people judge? I'll tell you how you know. You know. Uh, how do, how how does anybody know that they should do what they're doing? Because there's so much mediocrity no, out there. No, because they that's, do that's doing it. Well. They do it. They do it, and they have always done it. They can still They've suck. Always though. done they it. Can well, still not be good. They, they can suck, but they'll mm. do it. Yeah, that's right. how they so know. You're just saying I, be dedicated is what you're saying. If you enjoy it, I'm saying you'll do it. You mm. won't just decide that you want to be on TV. You'll be doing it. Mm. You'll be. Mm. In a play, mm. you'll be on stage. You'll be acting mm. if you love acting. If you're devoted to acting, if that's your well, calling. Is, well, first ahead. of all, I, I I was never an actress, so this is my first job acting. So right, but I but you were performing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I guess. Well, I, this doesn't have to be what you want. It have to be what you want to do either. By the way, I mean you could have fallen into it. Right. I'm just saying that I wasn't out like at every acting class and you know a lot of it has to do with being at the right place at the right time and you know luck of like a, a certain look or Oh yeah. You know. Right, but that that goes for everybody. Yeah. I mean there's a lot of people who have the right look. But I mean I totally of... agree with you and you know completely you know p get yourself involved. And keep on doing it and doing it and doing it. And well, something good it's the happen. same answer every band has for everybody who calls up and wants to start a band or wants to get their tape played or whatever. It's just go, go hit the road, practice, mm -hmm. play gigs, and just play and play because you love to play. And if you're good, it'll work out. If you're not, it'll work out too. Mm -hmm. All right. Either way, it'll it'll take care of itself. Let me let me tell you what the universe is because it's Thursday, which is like Friday, which is the end of the week for us. Yeah. Universe, uh, it ain't fair. And it ain't bad. It ain't anything. It just is. Mm. You make your own luck. You do all your own stuff. And here's the deal. There's 1% of people that shouldn't be where they, you know, there's uh, Tori Spelling. Uh, you, you know what I mean? She was born. Aaron Spelling's her dad. And she got that gig. Pow. That's a one in a billion. That's that. Then there's the bottom. There's the really super amazing, talented people who've got, because of bad luck, because of timing, because of whatever. Mental did, illness. Because of mental <laughs> illness, did not get the gig. Yeah. There's the, um, there's the horribly untalented people that are making millions of dollars, and there's the amazingly blessed, gifted person that is poor as hell. That is the bottom 1%. And then the top 1%. And all of us, we all fall in between, and everything's even for us. It's And that's it. So you're in that 98 percentile. Go out and work hard. And prosper. Enjoy. <laughs> that's right. Jessica? Hi. You're 16. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Um, so I had a question. Like, um, it's really hard for me to sleep. And, uh, like, I'm awake until, like, 2 a.m. sometimes. Mm. And then, um, like, the next day when I exercise or, like, I'm doing physical activities, I see these, like, kind of like these hallucinations, like bright lights or, like, stars, and they're, like, kind of all over the place. Hmm. So I was wondering if they were related. What are you doing? What kind of exercise? Um, dance. Is it when, is it when you've been, like, straining and, and stand, you know, yeah. going from yeah. a, leaning over and then standing up suddenly, that kind of thing? It's because you vomited up lunch and... Uh... You're, no, uh, you're low, no. blood sugar is low. Hey, are, you, are you depressed lately? Um, sort of. I mean, the depression can keep you awake all night, I, and then being awake all night can obviously make it difficult to tolerate physical exertion. And straining can sort of change the blood supply to the brain, cause you to see stars and things when you change position. Well, also dancing. Sometimes the DJ's got the uh, he's got the uh, warrant cranked up pretty loud, and those lights are coming from behind the bar. They're kind of blinding, and the poles right in there, and there's a guy throwing the money and everything. I mean, maybe that's maybe that's had a trouble. Yeah, yeah, dancing as in like ballet and, and uh, <laughs> stuff. I, I don't never heard of that. And what so, is that? there's other kinds of dancing. And sleep deprivation can cause even seizure and hallucinations occasionally. But that's usually severe sleep deprivation. Do you have an eating disorder? No, I don't. Really? Are you on any medication or supplements or anything? Actually, I'm on um, something for my hypothyroidism. So, Synthroid? Levothroid? Something like that? Yeah. You're just on thyroid replacement? Yeah. Hey, Drew. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, it is very true when you're sleep deprived. You know, you close your eyes, you open them, and you see the spots and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it's, yeah. it's, you're effed up. Yeah. 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 I, I, Thanks. I'd say that's sleep. I think, I think you gotta get some sleep, baby. 
Uh, I can't. I just can't. No, you take some sleeping I pills and have some thyroid bows. medicine is keeping her off. It's an interesting thought. Maybe your thyroid is too active, too much thyroid medicine. So you got to get that checked. And then if you are depressed, that ought to be dealt with because depression can certainly make sleep disturbed. What time do you get up in the morning? Um, For school, like 6. No, 6.30. 630. So she's yeah. only getting like 3 or 4 hours of sleep every That's night. That's horrible. What, what, are you going to some kind of prep school? No, it's just... Public school. Yeah. Why not take like mel like there's isn't that like a natural uh, melatonin? Sleeping pills, are sleeping pills good for you? No, no they're yeah. not good. They're not good like for candy. you. They're not good for you, but uh, no. Adam will tell you about melatonin. Uh, here's what I figured out about melatonin. I now take a ass full of melatonin. <laughs> Although I wash it down with some red wine too. All bets are off. I I, I get home. I eat, uh, I had Dr. Bruce tell me in here that they did some sort of test with melatonin. And that it does make you sleepy. A little bit, yeah. Some people but, especially. But, yeah, the weak. Yeah. I, don't, the weak I it, know. I don't sleep, so I know. It, but that that you had to take a quite a dose of it, not the two yeah. tablets that you thought you had. You had to take like eight of them. <laughs> and so I just take eight of them. And? Still nothing. Well, I end up going to bed eventually. You know, after, uh, after the Xanax and the... Uh, Oh, you got any Cabernet, you got yeah. any Cabernet? Yeah, what about melatonin and Cabernet? Is that all right? Mm. Okay. And he said melatonin was an antioxidant too. It was like vitamin yeah. C. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good for you. Mm. I take this stuff called they're they're called Calms. They're homeopathic. You just yeah. get them at Rite Aid or Rexall. Really, they work. I eat two. Like I can take two. They're really small. I take them because I get nervous flying. Right. I take them on the plane. They work like that. over the mm -hmm. counter. Yeah. See, that's why I wish I was a chick. Lightweight. I me, mean, Drew, back me up. I take some rocket fuel over the counter. Forget it. Something to take an over elephant the counter, down. I give them. I give them prescription. The horse tranquilizer. Prescription horse tranquilizer. And three bloody marys later. And you're, I'm you're yapping. I'm talking your ear off. Talking, I'm talking fast. Halfway to New York, yes. right? <laughs> Do you get nervous flying? No, I just like to get loaded. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I like to. I like to relax. I like to chill out a little bit. All right, we'll take a little break. Natalie Thomas here. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Well, it was a fast two hours, and uh, that's a good thing. At least it is for me. Wait a minute. We're, we're, we're still a little more show left. Oh, we do? Yeah. Oh, I was looking at another clock. Sorry, Adam. Oh, for Christ's sake, I was ready to go. What clock were you looking at, by the way? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Should we give me more of those sleeping pills, would you, brother? <laughs> wow. This has been Yeah, fun. thank you. Hey, what's wrong with wrapping up a little earlier? Listen, here's my feeling on this show. We run a couple minutes late almost every night. So once in a while, we stop half hour early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All Let's right. Make up for it. Natalie Ritano is uh, here. I can play this for the next 10 minutes. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That's all. Listen, that's all. That's what it sounds like to everyone blah, 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 anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's all blah, it blah, sounds blah. like. Yeah. It's Charlie Brown's teacher. Tim? Now, Charlie, Charlie Brown's teacher was funny, though. Tim, you're 25. Did we talk to this a home before? Was he asleep? asleep? There he is. Huh? Tim? No, he's not. All right. All right. Let's go. Here. Let's burn some yeah. calls. Melissa, you're 20. Yeah. You go to a party, you have uh, trouble saying no sexually? Well, kind of, yeah. Yes, all right. Have you been victimized before? No. You've never been a victim in your life? No, I don't, no. No rape, no abuse? No. Yeah, you, you drink too much? Not usually, most of the time I'm Okay, good, good. good. Then you're sober, then just say no to the sex. Thank you. You have no more problems. Unless there've been periods, you think, unless you've learned to feel powerless and impotent and not have value in yourself, it's hard. To, it's hard to assert yourself when you don't feel worthwhile. You've never, you've always felt powerless over, in relation to other people who want to have power over you. If your parents made you feel bad, if there was a lot of aggression in the house, you never got beat by your parents. I don't think so. I mean, I don't. Adam, you ever get beat by your parents? Uh, so I, I could kick my dad's ass when I was four and a yeah, half. That was. I don't think so. Is that even possible? Yeah, answer? that's a light beating. Yeah. I could have kicked my dad's ass at five. No S. Seriously. Well, it's just a self-esteem thing because I've battled depression for like a really long time. Right. And like, I don't know. I just I have really low self-esteem, and I just always end up doing things that I regret the next day. Well, that's that. That's what I said. That you don't feel good about yourself, and you can't. All right, so work on that, but don't work on it with a with a penis in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> know that that's going to make things worse. I mean, you just told us what's going on. It works in the moment, but it ultimately makes you feel worse about yourself afterwards. Right. Natalie's mic's off. All right. There we go. There we go. All right, Melissa. Yeah. All right, so work on yourself outside of the party. 
You got a little project. You do, got your things. Do get involved in things that make you feel good about yourself. Things that are worthwhile. Things that you're passionate about. Go do that. Okay. Oh boy. All right. And well, get wait, what do you want, get what treatment you, for your depression. You got to get treatment, Melissa. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's one of the problems of being. That's what, what do you expect when you're talking to someone who's depressed? Yeah. Pippi Longstocking on the mm -hmm. other phone. Mm -hmm. How dare you? Huh. One's got problems. Yeah, so go, go after what you're passionate yeah. about. When you're depressed, you're depressed. I have nothing. a question for Doctor Drew. Yeah. All right. Um, my brother is like on. I think that's on drug. He's on drugs. Yeah. And um, he's been um, telling me he smoked marijuana. He got very physical with me and my boyfriend. He um, pulled down his. Um, um, collar the other day and i seen like puncture hose yeah. i was wondering what kind of drugs they could be intravenously yes what kind of i mean like heroin what else is there speed cocaine heroin they're doing all kinds of stuff so but but you're usually into he's very violent now and yeah. he called my mother a bitch the other day well yeah, oh, heroin addicts will do that too but yeah. speed is the drug of violence uh, to be fair to him she had it coming oh okay adam be quiet you got more teeth than a rake okay you're gay. Don't. Uh, yes, I'm gay. But I'd rather ooh. sleep with a dead yak than sleep with you. How dare you, sir? Uh, How dare you? Listen, Mark, relax. I wouldn't uh. give you a cornhole in for all the tea in <laughs> oh, China. Oh, shut up. You're always calling people idiots, but look at those 1-800 commercials you do. My God, I've never seen something so stupid before in my life. 250 Mark. grand. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. How stupid can you be? Oops. <laughs> I'll tell you. Pretty quick. That uh, 250 grand buys a lot of books on tape. 15 I'll tell seconds. You that. 15 seconds. Jay? Jay? Yo. You're 20. Yep. Uh, 10 seconds. Uh, you got a fart? Oh, not right now. Oh, well, what kind of challenge are you to my gas throne? Well, I have to prepare, man. You know, it takes... All right. Well, listen, call up when you got a full tank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Anderson loves gas humor. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back. Hello. All right, now, is that it? That's it now. Yeah. Can we go You're home? finally... Good. You're there. I want to thank uh, Lauren for doing a great job on the phones. Look at her, that little Clark Kent look she's got sport tonight. Fantabulous. I want to thank uh, Sarah for coming in here uh, whenever she comes in here and screwing yeah. up the phones. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Anderson for doing a great job each and every night sliding those potentiometers. Whatever. <laughs> and uh, and pushing those buttons. I want to thank uh, producer Ann. She's still with the show? Yeah, she is. Okay, I want to thank producer Ann for coming in here when she comes in here, booking the show and doing a wonderful job. I want to thank uh, Natalie Ritano for coming in here from VIP every night of the week, as far as I know. Check your local listings. Always on a Fox affiliate, right? Yes. And the TNN. Uh, TNN. I don't know when it starts. That's not out yet. Though. It's not out yet. Next no. week, who are the guests? We got a big lineup next week. Oh, uh, we, we got uh, Aston uh, Kutcher from uh, that, that, 70's that show. 70's show, and uh, who, uh, who? Mark that? McGrath. Oh, Mark McGrath's going to be in here, and the guys from uh, Dude. Uh, which one are you? Uh, Dude, where's my car? They just stole my goddamn. Car. And Adam Wednesday. And Wednesday is, uh, oh, Minka, the great, uh, fabulous, number one Asian big boob queen. <laughs> Minka. I'm number one uh, oriental big boob queen. Right. She'll be in here on uh, Wednesday. How dare you? Uh, how dare you be so dismissive about <laughs> Minka's name? Like, what? What is that? What? You'll you'll you listen Wednesday night. Okay. You will know the name of Minka after that. Can I guarantee I stand you that. Out there with, like some pictures and get it. Uh, you like may. That. You just do not get too close to my Asian queen, Minka. So, until next time, it's Adam Crawford, Dr. Drew. Bye, you guys. And Minka saying, and Natalie Tana saying, mahalo. Uh, I gotta go. This has been Love Line.